Americans get a day off from work on October 11th every year to celebrate Columbus Day. It is a national holiday that commemorates the day on October 12th, 1492, when Italian explorer Christopher Columbus officially set foot in the Americas and went down in history as the man who discovered America. For many, the holiday is a way of both honoring Columbus's achievements and celebrating Italian-American heritage. But throughout its history, Columbus Day and the man who inspired it have generated controversy, and many alternatives to the holiday have been proposed since the 1970s, including Indigenous Peoples Day. But have you ever stopped to wonder how unusual it often is for a story that begins in the wrong place to arrive at the right conclusions? It is so with the history of how the new world was discovered. Traditional accounts have accorded primacy to Europe's 15th century discovery and to the maritime connection it established. Paired with this historic feat is the momentous discovery of what came to be known as the New World. However, it has become common knowledge amongst academics that Christopher Columbus clearly did not discover America, not least because it is impossible to discover a continent that was already there and thriving with culture. One can only wonder how Columbus could have discovered America when people were watching him from America's shores. But everybody, it seems, wants a piece of the discovery. The Vikings' claim centers on the fact that they had already colonized Iceland and Greenland over a millennium ago in the year 950 CE. Also, in 999 CE, Leif Erikson is known to have left Norway on his way to convert Greenland to Christianity and was blown off course and as a result found the new lands. He built Viking settlements before heading back. The Irish claim centers on St. Brendan, an Irish monk who in the 6th century is said to have sailed to America in his traditional coracle to discover new lands more than 5,000 kilometers away. The Welsh claimant is Madog Ab Owain, who is said to have landed in the year 1170. The Scottish claimant, on the other hand, is Henry Sinclair, Earl of Onkey, who is said to have reached Westford, Massachusetts in the year 1398. At this point, these famous feats of discovery dominate popular imagination. However, they obscure the true beginnings of the story of how Africans were first to step on American soil. Now, I know this idea has been vehemently rejected by much of the scholarly community, which is no surprise given how African history was wiped out from modern history. But I'd like us to look at the evidence instead of the facts. Facts change all the time depending on many variables. Evidence, on the other hand, remains uncontradicted, uncontroverted, and wholly incontestable, no matter the variables. Contrary to popular belief, African-American history did not start with slavery. An overwhelming body of new evidence is emerging, which proves that Africans had frequently sailed across the Atlantic to the Americas thousands of years before Columbus and indeed before other civilizations. The strongest evidence of African presence in America before Columbus comes from an eyewitness account of Columbus himself. In 1920, a renowned historian and linguist Leo Wiener of Harvard University, in his book Africa and the Discovery of America, explained how Columbus noted in his journal that Native Americans had confirmed that black-skinned people had come from the southeast in boats trading in gold-tipped spears. Ever since Christopher Columbus first suggested that black Africans preceded him, a number of scholars investigated this contention. In his journal of the second voyage, this was recorded in Racolta Part 1, Volume 1. Quote, 
Curious about the validity of this story, Columbus did indeed send samples of these spears back on a mail ship to Spain to be examined. And it was found that the ratio of properties of gold, copper, and silver alloy were identical to the spears then being forged in West African Guinea. Although eyewitness accounts of early European explorers may be the best evidence of an African presence in the New World that preceded Columbus, it is certainly not the only evidence. So let's keep digging. Take a look at a map of the world and study the west coast of Africa and the east coast of South America. Slide the two continents towards each other and you can see an almost perfect jigsaw fit. However fascinating this may be, I'd like us to focus on a different aspect between these two land masses, their proximity to each other. When you take a closer look at things, Africa and South America aren't actually very far apart from each other. The closest tips of each continent are less than 3,000 kilometers away, making Africa the closest inhabited area to the Americas. Furthermore, off the coast of Africa are also the Cape Verde Islands that make a suitable restocking station for sailors. If launched from here, the trip to South America would be about 2,500 kilometers. You see, African explorers crossing the vast Atlantic waters in ships may seem unlikely or perhaps far-fetched to some. The incredible seafaring achievement is not as daunting as it seems, given that many successful modern attempts have illustrated that without an oar, rudder or sail, ancient African boats, including the dugout canoe, would certainly have been able to cross the vast ocean in a matter of weeks. The voyages were made possible mostly because of the prevailing wind patterns and ocean currents that all blow from Africa to, you guessed it, South America. These are the same winds and currents that were later used by Europeans during the transatlantic slave trade when shipping slaves from Africa. If you look closely, the currents serve as a conveyor belt of sorts from Africa's west coast to the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the northeastern corner of South America. Add to this, Africans were masterful shipbuilders. This painting derived from Nubian pottery shows either a long-hauled boat or a papyrus raft or a holdout canoe was carbon dated back to 3000 BCE. This one is a bird's eye view of a Nord River boat painting from Chad and it dates from 3500 BCE. The Africans of Guinea also had dugout canoes hewn from gigantuan trees from the Congo forest discovered by the Portuguese after Captain Pacheco Pereiro wrote, in this country can be found the largest canoes made of single trunks, some so large that they could hold at least 80 men. Despite this, nobody questions the seaworthiness of similar type vessels used by Polynesians to sail to the Americas. Anyway, here's a 15th century Portuguese painting of sailing canoes in the Congo River. Even though some people insist that Africans couldn't have made it to the New World simply because they didn't have the skill and resources to sail across the Atlantic. Another clear indicator of transatlantic travel is the recent discovery of American narcotics in Egyptian mummies that left contemporary historians amazed. These substances included South American cocaine and nicotine. In 1992, German toxicologist Velta Babalanova reported the findings which suggest that such compounds made their way to Africa through transatlantic trade that would predate Columbus's arrival by thousands of years. In case you're still not convinced or still at the fence, maybe this will push you over. When most people think about ancient Mexico, the first civilizations that come to mind are the Incas, Aztecs and the Maya. 
However, during the early 1870s, archaeologists uncovered a civilization known as the Olmecs of 1200 BC. This predated any other advanced civilization in the Americas. Olmecs are perhaps best known for the carved helmet-wearing headstones found in central Mexico that exhibit an unmistakably African appearance. Since the discovery of the first head, 16 other colossal stone heads were found in many parts of Mexico, including ancient sacred sites such as La Venta and Tres Zapotes in southern Mexico. Ranging up to 11 feet in height and weighing 30 to 40 tons, these statues generally depict helmeted black men with large eyes, broad fleshy noses, full lips, and most importantly, Ethiopian-type braided hair. They appear to represent priest kings who ruled vast territories in Mesoamerica, which is Mexico and Central America, during the Olmec period. Historian Floyd Hayes wrote, One might merely ask himself, if Africans were not present in the Americas before Columbus, why the typically African physiognomy on the monuments? It is in contradiction to the most elementary logic and to all artistic experience to suggest that these ancient Olmec artists could have depicted with such detail African facial features they had never seen before. What is laughable is that European archaeologists in Mexico, despite this glaring evidence, attributed the Olmec statues to giant babies, monkeys, and even aliens. Anything, just not Africans. I'd like to know your thoughts on this in the comment section below. Similarities across early American and African religions also indicate significant cross-cultural contact. The Mayans, Aztecs, and Incas all worshipped black gods, and the surviving portraits of the black deities are revealing. For instance, ancient portraits of the Quetzalcoatl are unquestionably Negro with dark skin and woolly hair. Why would Native Americans view these images which are unmistakably African with high respect if they had never seen them before? Numerous wall paintings in caves in the Americas depict the famous ancient Egyptian opening of the mouth and cross libation rituals. All these religious similarities are too large to occur, far too often to be mere coincidences. For years, Eurocentric archaeologists have largely turned a blind eye when it comes to the discovery of artifacts from ancient Egypt being discovered in the Americas. Egyptian artifacts found across North America, from the Algonquin writings on the East Coast to the artifacts and Egyptian place names in the Grand Canyon are all signs of an early arrival in the Americas by Africans. Clearly, Africans helped civilize America well before Europeans discovered America and well before Europeans claim to have civilized Africa. As you can see, we are only beginning to scratch the surface on the numerous evidence that supports the idea that ancient Egyptians and medieval empires of Ghana, Mali, Songhai and Benin had the ability of transoceanic voyages in the distant past, leaving behind clues that today's researchers are finally picking up. In light of the vast evidence available, far more than those of the Vikings, why is this information virtually unknown to the general public? You see, for years, this story was hidden and forbidden to be repeated. Researchers who dared to bring out new finds that were against the accepted history were intimidated, funding terminated, and in some cases, jobs and careers put in jeopardy. History is not necessarily a competition, it's simply just that. History. There's a vast body of knowledge to be uncovered about Africa. When you push one door, other doors begin to open. I hope you enjoyed the video guys, drop a like if you did. A massive thank you to our patrons for making this video possible. 
If you'd like to increase your understanding of Africa, start now by subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.